What is up guys, we're here on the beach near San Diego. So we're doing a little autofocus test on the new A6400. Jared's working on it over here. Come on, I'll show you what we're doing. This is, it's, it's behind the scenes, yet still the scene, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Jaren Schneider. Yeah. My man, he does the podcast that, that I'm talking about a lot now because we're doing it. And you guys are missing it if you're not listening to it. And it's pretty good. If you like like this, all the time. You can get even more of it <laughs> if you're not sick of him. It's like 15 minutes of Ted's not enough. I need an hour. And I need a little little Jaren in there too. Yeah, well, yeah. Then this is the you thing. want a slight distraction. Then totally. So Jaren, as I've mentioned many times, is a writer for Imaging Resource, and we we're both on the Sony trip for this. Yesterday we took the new A6400 out, and we did right here. You gotta check out our rig too. This is pretty cool. So we were shooting a basketball game yesterday under bridge, which was fun. But we were having issues with the autofocus. So, yeah, new tracking mode. Yeah, specifically yeah. tracking. That's the one thing I was working on mostly yesterday was tracking because um, that's what they hype so much. So that's all I was thinking. That's about. what it's they're like, talking about. I really yeah. got it. I got to try the tracking. It's got to right. be great. And I, the tracking had a really hard time if anything got in between what you were originally focused on and you. So if, if you had a basketball player here and you're here and someone came in between you, it would it, it would catch lose. on to that person yeah, or get confused. Or if a basketball player like there was a pole in one shot yeah, that we were doing. Yeah. If they go behind the pole would stick to the pole and part of that I mean it would make sense because the camera's depth aware and so if something is in the foreground it's gonna want to pop to that so we're trying to figure out today how to reproduce this somewhat this is a cool rig actually so I brought my Atomos Ninja Flame check this out and so it's getting an HDMI feed out of the camera and I've just been Jaren's just been shooting on it and what this will do is it'll record what you see on the screen so it gets the green boxes and the IAF and all that and so we, could we could actually show you what we're seeing when we're autofocusing yeah and trying to kind of explain it intelligently since we actually have the camera to do it hands-on with the verdict right now is that for the price point for the expectation you might have from this camera, it's not horrible no uh, but Okay, future Ted here, and I'm going to interrupt for a second so that I can show you exactly what the results are on this camera and what made our tests a little bit confusing. Essentially, there's a disconnect between what the camera's actually doing in the images and what you're seeing on the screen. It's not the end of the world, but allow me to explain because it's something you do need to know about the A6400. So what you were looking at here is a screen recording off of the back of the monitor, and we took the HDMI signal and recorded it into the Atomos Ninja 5 that, so we could compare what was actually on the screen to the actual images. So if we look at the screen here, the camera is not shooting, but we do have tracking engaged. As the woman is moving, you'll see how the A6400 is moving between object tracking, color pattern, distance tracking, facial recognition, and also IAF. And when the box is changed, that's what you're seeing. And this is what sets Sony apart. It's using artificial intelligence in the autofocus algorithm to define what it's looking at and not only track it, but get as precise as recognizing the human eye. And this is how you can make maintain accuracy even if the subject is turning and moving. Now the issue that we were having is when the camera is actually shooting a burst of images and if I slow the sequence down to the part where the camera is actually shooting photos you can see that the object tracking is telling you what's in focus theoretically and what you start to see if we go frame by frame is the performance seems to drop. At first glance, it looks like it's sticking to the net, and you look closer in other places, it looks like it's just lagging behind the subject. The assumption based on the feedback that we're getting from the monitor is that the tracking is not working like we want it to, but if we compare this to the actual image sequence that was taken by the camera, we can see that the focus on our subject is spot on accurate. And this is actually really important as you need to understand how the camera is working. And it actually works in Sony's favorite because the images are the most important thing in the end. But the A6400 is taking a full data readout off of the sensor. It's calculating the autofocus switching between its various methods of object recognition. It's moving the lens elements to focus and it's processing an image. And adjustments are made and calculated every fraction of a second and it's also providing a graphic layer of feedback to you as the photographer on this screen using the green box icon so that you know what it is doing and this doesn't seem to be tied with recording the actual image its purpose is to tell you what it's going on the priority here is clearly the images and we can see that the camera is doing exactly what it's supposed to do the errors however are in this layer of graphic feedback on the screen once the burst image shooting begins this is where the camera is moving the most data. Now, in fairness, this camera cannot be expected to be an A9. Even if the processor is the same, you don't have the stack CMOS sensor with its front-end LSI memory layer, so on and so forth. So the fact that this happens on the A6400 
at all is extremely impressive, and it's the most important thing is that the images are in focus. Now, we did talk to several engineers while we were shooting, and I understand that it's inappropriate for these gentlemen to actually tell us exactly what's going on inside the camera, but the bottom line is that it's managing a ton of data, and in the end, the results are spot on, but if you're shooting sports, you'll have to just trust the camera. But then again, if sports Sports is your thing, I'm sure that you're probably not looking at the lowest price entry level camera. So it's going to come down to expectations and reality. But either way, I'm still impressed. We expect this from the A9. We generally don't expect to even see it on a camera less than a quarter of the price tag. But I think this is significant though, as Sony seemed to be striving to include these features in cameras throughout the entire lineup. And I don't see this with any of their competition. You get 10 frames a second shooting speeds with extremely accurate autofocus. And this alone, exceeds some DSLRs at much higher price points. So I think the problem is, is they kind of poisoned it a little bit by showing us what this same technology does inside the A9. Exactly. And because the A9 was like so, so good. So the A9, if anyone has ever shot with it, or you, you've probably talked yeah, about yeah. it a lot. Love the A9. It's so good already. And then they added this new feature into it, which makes it even better. That, that camera is spectacular. And when, unfortunately, that experience didn't transition over to, of course, no, uh, I mean, a $999 camera. Yeah, that's a $4,500 camera. Yeah. We're talking about a camera that's under a so thousand. So I have to remind myself that it's not the same. Well, so. and I, it's only, we were gonna, we're gonna talk about this in the podcast, big time. Yeah. Because it was announced as part of that keynote yesterday that it has the same processor that's borrowed right. from the A9 or camera, right. how they said it. Yeah, they used some language that made it sound like the A9 was inside this inexpensive camera. Yeah, or the, or the, the fundamental thing that makes the A9 so fast. The problem with that is, is that if, okay, so is that true? And the problem is, is the A9, I think this was answered, Mark was telling us this morning, is that he's one of the, he's the senior technical manager. The A9, you can't just put the processor in and expect the same results. So that may be a little bit misleading because you're talking about stack CMOS sensor. So there's DRAM, there's a memory, la integral memory layer on this. There's so, so much more involved than just the processor. Yeah, you need the sensor too. On top of that, they could not confirm nor deny that it actually was the processor. In fact, so that's exactly the answer we God. Right. Even we won't if it, comment on but that right now. even if it is, it doesn't necessarily matter. No, and I think that's the point we're trying to make. Yeah. It's a nine hundred dollar camera. So what are your expectations out? It's not the what we've replicated here and what we've been or what Jaren's actually been shooting is we're trying to reproduce what happened yesterday. And this is a different scenario entirely because we're volleyball on the beach. Nobody's really crossing each other. And it is also way, way brighter. It's too, way brighter. Which is gonna be beneficial to the system. So as such, it actually isn't doing terrible today. No, it's doing really well. Um it's I will say that the tracking is better than if you weren't using the tracking before. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just tested it. Tracking is superior. So that's nice. So there are situations where it'll work. We were actually proven wrong in a nice way. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I still am hesitant to trust it because there, if, if anything goes slightly awry, you will be disappointed. So I, I, I like that it's in here. It's better than it not being in here. Sure. But it's not my favorite feature or my favorite camera so far that Sony's ever released. I mean, in this price point, I, it's hard for me to... Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's just, it's like anything else. And I think this is what makes it confusing a little bit to this full thing on this, but it's, you know, what are the expectations of somebody who is probably getting this for a family camera that's going to shoot kids' sports? Well, it depends what the sport is and what the light situation is, and are they, is it like volleyball on the beach, or is it like a dimly lit soccer game at night? That could be different with players crisscrossing. Again, what are the expectations? But then there's other cool things about this camera, like it'll do, they remove the limit, so it's no longer a 30 minute record limit. Like this is one of the first consumer cameras I've ever seen that you can record in definite 4K on. I think of it, it might be the first one. I can't think of it. It may be. And if you're buying it to record video of kids' games and stuff, the you're probably gonna you know, dig the it. The thing is, I still need to do that. I'm gonna try we the tracking video. in video. Yeah. Because they, the, the engineers said it was supposed to be actually even better than the stills, having because the, the, the sensor has a hard time writing both the data yes. and the pictures at the same time because it's, it's too much stuff. The, the pipe is too small. But well, with video, yeah. it's supposed to be slightly better. That's what this. Whole and thing in addition was. to that, one thing you won't be able to see on here is like this will take a video feed HDMI, so I can't show the green boxes on right. video. But that's another thing you don't get them on the screen either. So if you're shooting video, there may be a graphic layer that's trying to indicate to you, the user, what's going on with the camera too. So I don't know. Um, a lot of technical stuff. Yeah. But. I, I have to remind myself, I think this is actually a pretty good camera for the price point. For the price point, yeah. It's a $900 camera. I, I just, it sucks because they, they hyped this one feature so much and it's not as great as it was hyped. Listen to the podcast. We're going to go... I'm gonna go into detail. Yeah. Rumor okay. websites. You cut me off then. The problem of hype. Did I just cut you off? No, I think you should because I'll go on forever. <laughs>
<laughs> There's no recording limit on this camera. Now. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> we could go on forever. <laughs> we're, we're, we're good. All right, so join us on the podcast. If I don't know when all this stuff will go up, so look for a pinned comment or something below. You're the man. <laughs>